There, there we go. Goes. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here right on a Monday morning at eight o'clock. It's nice to have the sunshine and blue skies uh, for it. We're going to have a busy week ahead of us and we get to hit the ground running on our committee today. So um, I think, Ms. Randall, you've said before, I'll call the meeting order of the Legislative Audit Commission uh, evaluation subcommittee, and I think we need to call the roll. Is that right, Ms. Randall? Okay. Ms. That is Here. correct, Senator Kiffmeyer. Thank you. So, Maureen, if you would do that. Senator Kiffmeyer. Present. Representative Erickson. Erickson, present. Representative Hansen. Senator Klein. Here. Senator Coran. Here. Representative Liebling. Here. That completes the roll. Five members are present. Thank you very much. We have a quorum. Madam Chair, I'm sorry if I may. Just wanted to let you know that Representative Hansen has sent me a message saying he's having trouble getting on. So hopefully he'll okay. be able to join us soon. Thank you. All right. Good, good. Well, our goal today, or our purpose today for meeting is the final uh, topic selection. And uh, just want to mention that. And so, Ms. Randall, if you want to just go ahead and report the results. And by the way, there's a significant difference from Friday uh, afternoon at 4 o'clock and over the weekend. Um, Ms. Randall, if you would just cover what you do and how that comes to be. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. For the record, my name is Judy Randall, Legislative Auditor. Thank you all for making time. Um, to be here this morning. I know it's a busy time. Um, so what has happened? Um, I mean, I just want, if I could, I'm sorry, if Representative Hansen, I renamed him as Representative Hansen because there was a phone number that called in. If he could confirm that that's him, that would be great. And if not, then I've renamed a different phone number as Representative Hansen. Um, let me walk through the process, um, Madam Chair and members. Um, um, as you know, we um, received um, 67 topics for um, us to evaluate this year. Um, the subcommittee met and narrowed that list down to 15 topics. Of those 15 members um, then narrowed it down. Well, sorry, sorry. Uh, we, you've all selected 15 topics. OLA staff worked on background papers and provided additional information on those 15 topics. Based on that information and OLA staff rating of the topics from most to least um, promising based on the topic selection criteria the commission has approved. You all, the subcommittee selected um, 11 topics for further consideration. We then put those topics on a survey for all members to um, in, indicate their interest in those topics. Because I have something. Um, and then um, uh, we sent out the survey and then we received results. It was a very quick turnaround. I really appreciate you all getting your caucus members to respond. It was an extraordinary response in a very short time frame during a very busy time. So I really do appreciate that. Um, what happened in the now? Um, and um, we received, as of Friday at the deadline, we received 139 um, responses. Um, and you received those survey results um, Friday afternoon. Um, over the weekend, I did receive a number of additional survey responses. Um, and typically the way um, OLA handles kind of any comments or responses we receive after the fact is we include anything we receive up until the meeting time that has happened with topics that are suggested and with the votes. So this morning you received another updated set of the survey responses that um, by my count shows uh, 149 responses. Um, and I know Madam Chair, who I don't see on here anymore, but maybe you all do. Um, I know Madam Chair had expressed some concern um, that um, the votes had, had shifted somewhat between Friday afternoon and this morning. Um, and so that may be something that you all want to discuss. We have the results um, Friday afternoon if you want to use those. We have the results from this morning if you want to use those. I will note that the commission historically takes the survey results as guidance. Um, as you know, it is the committee and the commission's decisions on which topics to select ultimately. And the surveys indicate a gauge of legislative interest um, 
Um, but, you know, it historically has not been simply uh, the top five vote getters, if you will, are the ones that are selected because the commission considers other other factors such as um, the balance, um, the timeliness and, and other aspects of the topic selection criteria. Um, with that, Madam Chair, I will stop my review, but I'm not sure Madam Chair is- Madam Chair is having trouble uh, getting back in, something happened. Okay, oh, there we go. Madam Chair, you're muted. Okay, all right, here I am. And uh, just to recap for you, Madam Chair, I, um, I reviewed kind of our process and I also noted the difference in the survey results between Friday afternoon and this morning. And I um, reminded members that um, historically the commission, while uses the survey results as a guide, does not necessarily simply follow the top five vote getters um, because the commission considers the other aspects of the criteria such as balance and um, timeliness and other aspects. Thank you very much, Ms. Randall. I appreciate that. I think we're, um, I think it just gets, usually there's maybe not much difference, but this time there was a significant difference. And I think waiting till everything is in, I think is important before uh, doing that just for future reference. At any rate, um, now that I'm kind of situated again, I can get back to it. So I appreciate that. So Madam, Madam Chair, excuse me for interrupting. We all got a message from Representative, uh, sorry, Senator Benson says she's having difficulty. If someone could resend the yeah. link to her. Thank you. Yeah, she's not on this topic selection uh, group subcommittee. Okay, she's not on it. Oh, well, she is. Yes, that she's on the full audit commission, but not the subcommittee. So I don't know why she got it. It happened last time too. So we're going to, um, Christina, would you get a hold of Senator Benson's office or somebody and let her know not to sweat it, not to worry about it. Okay. Madam Chair, you're muted. I'm on a different laptop, so just um, working it through. Christina took mine out and we'll kind of see uh, where we are at. Okay, so back to the agenda. So Ms. Randall, um, working session, you did that introduction. <clears throat> I see a hand, Representative Erickson. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just wondering from uh, Ms. Randall, to what extent uh, the uh, most promising to least promising is important to the auditors, and then also the balance, if you could kind of review that for us, please. Ms. Randall. Thank you, Madam Chair and Representative Erickson. Uh, the most promising to least promising uh, ranking, if you will, is staff's assessment of where we think we can add the most value. Um, that being said, you know, I was reviewing it again this morning and really feel confident that we can add value on any of these topics. Um, and so I do think you can feel comfortable um, selecting any of them. Um, some of them require more scoping than others, but of course that's par for the course. Um, so I, I would say that in terms of the ranking. In terms of the balance, I think there's a number of things to think about when you're considering balance. Um, one thing is the amount to which we are either hitting one agency multiple times, because we do create a lot of work for an agency. And then the other thing that's, that's really related to that is how many times would we be reporting to one committee? our recommendations um, rather than maybe reaching um, a broader array of committees, uh, legislative committees, so that uh, more legislators can um, consider you know, our work and, and get value out of it. Um, there's some one other aspect of balance, and I'm looking at kind of the matrix that, that summarizes all of them. Uh, the Board of Nursing is really the only one here that has low balance. Um, and that 
that is in large part because we recently did a board of nursing evaluation. It really hasn't been that long and it's a relatively small board. I know it is important, um, but so that's another consideration when you think about balance. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll say is there are three topics on this year's list related to grants. Um, and so that is something to think about. Um, there's the grants to nonprofit organizations, which would be more of a look across several state agencies, and we would scope which agencies those are, and it would look, I think, a little bit more at the extent to which agencies are complying with the Office of Grants Management Policies, and the extent to which those Office of Grant Management Policies are appropriate and make sense and, and are providing the right level of accountability. The two other topics related to grants, uh, Minnesota Department of Education Grants Oversight, and Office of Justice Programs grants would look at that compliance piece as well within those departments, but then it would get down deeper and I think really be able to look at a, a, a sample of specific grants and look to see at what outcomes we got for them. So could we do all three? Yes, they're slightly different, but it, it is a little heavy um, in, a, in the same area of focus. Thank you. But Ms. Randall, to just clarify though, um, because grants ranked very high in every, every one of them, uh, the general grants and nonprofits, the highest, of course. And so my question for you is, um, again, kind of on that same line, can you basically cover all three, Office of Justice, MDE, and then the general topic, uh, you can, and maybe choose which areas have the greatest need? Would that be the case? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for the question. If the grants to nonprofit organization was selected, that topic, um, and, and the commission said, you know, we'd like you to roll in the MDE grants and the OJP grants somehow, um, what I think we would do is they for sure would be part of our case studies, right? The Department of Education and OJP would be part of our case studies and looking at how agencies comply. Um, and to the best of our ability, if we were able to dig deep into the way um, specific grants were um, monitored and followed through, you know, we would focus on grants in MDE and OJP. So I think we could touch on the other two. I don't think it would be quite as in-depth as it would if they were selected on their own. Um, but I do think we could provide a closer look at grants in those two okay. agencies in particular. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Chair. Representative Erickson. Thank you. Uh, just to respond, to, because it, those were my questions, I noticed that uh, among the amounts uh, that are disseminated through the agencies that uh, Health and Human Services uh, had probably the highest amount, education and public safety then, uh, noting the amount going for justice programs, uh, that, that might be a way to look at it too, is, is those three agencies. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Let's see, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would uh, move to recommend to the full commission grants to nonprofit organizations, uh, assistance to those Minnesotans who are Black, Indigenous, or people of color, COVID-19 housing assistance program, Southwest Light Rail, and sustainable building guidelines. The top five scoring. And that would include rolling in the MDE grants and Office of Justice into the general topic of nonprofits, correct, Representative Hansen? That would be my intent so that they do the case studies as Ms. Randall recommended, or not recommended, but uh, described how it would work. Okay, I just want to clarify so we can do that. And then the 50, I'm, I'm going to use the votes 54 votes, 77. 54, correct? That's one, two, three, four, and then? 55 and 94. Okay, two does everybody have that on them in a clear enough way? Are you all okay understanding what that is? Motion? Uh, rep uh, sorry, Senator Friends. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks, everybody. Looking forward to getting this buttoned up to take to the full commission. Uh, I just wanted to call a little bit of attention to two issues, please. First of all, of course, Southwest Light Rail has been the topic of some legislative action and discussion. I've had some members of the Senate 
um, point out that, you know, there appears to be some direction going there. I'm not suggesting that it wouldn't be a topic selection here. I'm just saying, keep in mind, we have legislation that's actually moved through. Um, and then this is a little bit under the top five of vote getters, but I want to put in a special request for members of this subcommittee to consider the county mental health crisis response teams. I don't know if um, Ms. Randall would speak to it, but here is why I'm asking us to take a second look. First of all, um, mental health and in particular adult mental health has been the subject of a tremendous amount of input from constituents in my area, not just my district, but it's a nexus of mental health and law enforcement and the providing of health and human services. I know we have the house chair of HHS in the subcommittee. And I'd also like to mention that we have a proposal from DHS to adjust the funding for adult mental health initiatives that would in effect reduce funding to some of the adult mental health initiatives. That seems quite timely, especially given that law enforcement has been telling us that mental health and the crisis response um, is a, at a critical point here where if we want to provide the best possible services, you know, we're going to have to look at that in the way we do it. And um, Senator Rosen and I are actually carrying a bill to increase some funding for the adult mental health initiative. That's a different Zoom call. But my point, members, is that although I see it only received 37 votes and therefore would not be in the top five, and I'm not um, trying to twist any arms, but uh, Madam Chair, asking members to just take note of the county mental health crisis response team issue. I think there's real value to provide and OLA being so sensational and all um, could potentially shine light on that for a number of entities, including uh, public safety, uh, providing adult mental health, uh, DHS, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Friends. Uh, so Ms. Randall, we've gone through this discussion before. Uh, the legislation uh, difference between how important it is to have this done. And by the way, I'm carrying this message for uh, transportation and such, but can you explain again the difference between or what it's meant by the legislation passed and what this topic selection would do? Uh, Madam Chair, yes. And I'm assuming you're talking related to Southwest Light Rail. Yeah, yes, correct? yes. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Senator Franz. Um, so the legislation that passed contains two pieces. There is a piece related to, or both of them um, involve OLA doing work. The law states, and it is now law, it's gone through both bodies and was signed by the governor, requires OLA to conduct a special review, a program evaluation, or both. So it's an or, the language is or. OLA is committed to conducting a special review. That is already underway. We have sent a request to Met Council for information. They have responded already to our first round of inquiries. Um, and so the special reviews team is digging into that. That will happen. The program evaluation, the law then goes on to say, if the audit commission selects this topic for a program evaluation, here are the things we would like OLA to look at. And it has you know, 17 different items they would like us to look at in a program evaluation. Um, the difference is really a matter of resources, the breadth and depth of, of um, the topic that we would be able to get into. Special reviews has two staff people. They will look at this, but they also deal with many other issues that are coming in on a regular basis. Um, if a program evaluation is selected, it would be a three-person team that is focused solely on this topic for the next 10 months. Um, so if the program evaluation is selected, we will look more broadly and more deeply at the questions related to Southwest, including you know, what um, decisions were made along the way, what information was included, um, how was the route chosen, um, and looking at you know, general questions of management and process. If, um, and then the special review would layer on top of that and provide answers to some very specific questions, a little bit more descriptive information. If the program evaluation is not selected by this topic, the special review team would provide, again, answers to those specific questions, those specific kind of descriptive pieces of information. And it would try to go a little bit broader than it otherwise would um, because of the bipartisan, bicameral interest. And if there's not a program evaluation team, the special reviews team would try to do a little bit more of an expansive job, but it would not be able to replace the efforts of three full-time program evaluators. So something will happen, absolutely. It's a matter of how broad and how deep. Thank you, Ms. Randall. I think the big thing is to understand also, Ms. Randall, I think it came with $200,000 if we chose the topic, right? Is that correct? 
Um, Madam Chair, the $200,000 was appropriated to us regardless of whether you choose the topic. That was part of that law. So, and we, we appreciate the support from the legislature. All right. Well, um, I do know that both Representative Hornstein and Senator Dibble, Senator Newman, there is a huge bevy of people who definitely want this topic chosen without question. Um, I would consider though, in my opinion, if we uh, took um, something else maybe, but I, I don't think there's an option here. At any rate, I think this is um, where we're at right now. And Representative Liebling, you have your hand up. By the way, uh, just to mention here, there seems to be some confusion. Senator Friends, you're not on this topic. Uh, audit Commission, the Evaluation Subcommittee. You're not on this subcommittee, oh. just to let you know. Um, you're on the full, but you're not on the uh, Evaluation Subcommittee. That is Representative Erickson, Representative Hansen, Representative Liebling, myself, Senator Klein, and Senator Coran. But I think there must have been some confusion about getting this on people's calendars or some other things both you and Senator Benson, but you're not on the subcommittee, so. Thank you, Madam Chair. And maybe yeah. maybe then I don't have to spend a lot of time on this, but I was just gonna respectfully say that since my name was invoked by Senator France, <laughs> that I, I don't really agree with his assessment of the, that. And I actually support what Representative Hansen put forward. I think it was like the top five that he's suggesting and yeah, um, you know, while I really appreciate the interest in the topic and share that interest, I also think that at, at a time when we're legislating around something and standards are changing and we're going to change programs isn't really the best time to get the legislative auditor involved in it. So um, because, you know, obviously that that isn't going to happen until later. So if it's just a, as a timing matter. So just wanted to put my two cents in on that. Thank you. And I, just to say, too, while I have the floor. I think there was confusion because other members were invited to come and be here. Yeah. And so, it, and, you know, I share often their confusion about who's on what subcommittee. So just to say no, no shame in that. No, my goodness sakes. No, I think it's just important. I wasn't even really paying that close attention and uh, until it was brought to my attention. And I thought, uh, and not only that, the um, audit commission, I think it's because it came out as one agenda uh, it's kind of a little interesting. So it's eight o'clock, the evaluation subcommittee and 8.30 is the full legislative audit commission. And I think it came out as one invite maybe, and you'll certainly have input, Senator Prince. At Madam the Chair. Next level. Yes, Senator Prince. Uh, just th briefly, and thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Liebling. To the point of Representative Liebling, the proposal to change the funding for the adult mental health initiative is significant and is not scheduled to take event until 2025. Therefore, uh, the adult mental health initiative in my area is anxious for us to make sure we do exactly the right thing and therefore hope um, some OLA input might be timely. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm gonna turn my camera off until 829 and a half. <laughs> All right, <laughs> two more minutes. Oh my gosh, Representative Erickson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted you to repeat the motion that, that Representative Hansen moved uh, so that we can understand again uh, what it is that he uh, proposed. Sure. Okay. So the motion is um, grants and nonprofits, MBE grants, and the Office of Justice Program grants be rolled into one. That would be one. Uh, the uh, next vote getter is Rent Help MN and COVID 19 Housing, 77. Uh, sustainable Building Guidelines, 55, Southwest Light Rail, 54, and the other 54 programs supporting Minnesotans, uh, the BIPOC uh, choice. Those are the five before us right now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Friends, do you know that you have your hand up, though your camera's off? I, I did now that you mention it. I'll take that hand down right now. Right now. Okay. Thank you, Madam right. Chair. I, I would have thought that was your intention. I just wanted to, just in case there was some emergency. All right, that is the motion before us at this time. I'll, uh, we'll call for the vote. Uh, Ms. Randall, do we do a voice uh, roll call? Okay, roll call, Ms. Garrity. Senator Giffmeyer. Aye. Representative Erickson. Aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Senator Klein. Aye. 
Senator Coran. Aye. Representative Liebling. Aye. That completes the vote with a unanimous total. Thank you, Ms. Garrity. Uh, the motion does prevail and we have a unanimous vote. With that members and the work being done, I will adjourn the meeting of the evaluation subcommittee of the Legislative Audit Commission. We are adjourned.